Here we are. We might be drunk. We're back. Good to see you, folks. It's been too long. You've been on the road and a yeah. bus. Yeah. I don't even know who you are. <laughs> no, yeah. A good, a good friend, Mike Vecchione. Hey, Mike. Thank Fresh you. off his new special. Produced by our other pal, Nate Bargatze. Yes. And directed by him. Yes. yes. And available for free now on YouTube. I'll start with a plug. And it's killer. Mike is one Thank of the you. best joke writers. Killer. In the biz. Give over, it a watch. Over a million views already. So yes. if you're late to the party. Get on it if you haven't seen it. Yeah. Hell yeah. Nate Land. Nate Land Productions. I love it. Yeah. I love the... the, the comics get... helping comics. Yes. Late to the party is a weird expression because it is good to be a little late to a party. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's, that's, that's late. true. The first person at a party is like kind of a tool. Right. <laughs> we don't want to be too of, late. Yeah. The first person talks about themselves in the third person. Mm. <laughs> 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 All right. <laughs> This is a good, I'm going to text Seinfeld that bit premise. <laughs> late to the party. You don't be too late. All right. <laughs> but yeah, how do you feel? You, you got it out. It's done. It's, it's all. It's good. It's done. And uh, now I'm just uh, doing the other half of the business, which I didn't expect, which is um, <laughs> the, the promotional tour. part of it. We thought the writing of it and the performing of it and getting that together was hard. But oh, yeah. The uh, podcast tour now and uh, yeah. getting Instagram clips and getting things to go viral in order to sell tickets. Well, I'm oh, sorry. Yeah. I was happy to see you. Ah. Sorry, you, uh, sorry you. This is such a chore, Mike. Yeah. Uh, this is the best. <laughs> no, we're happy to have no. you on here, man. No, I, but I know what you mean. Doing the we're like press pushing it, you know what I mean? It's like it's we all harder just want than to the... do it and then put it out and have it get seen. But unfortunately, that's not where we live now. No. So it's like we have to go out and like push it and pump it and everything to get people to look at it it's yeah. bittersweet though yeah but then when people do look at it they're exactly. like this was amazing and they it's kind of like they have to make the discovery on their own yeah you know it's like or if you say it or if you say I've had both guys say mark sam suggested this and it's like now i'm hooked so it's like them taking the suggestion and them watching it then they become a fan love yeah. it yeah yeah it's a bitch to do but it's better to get the views. Yes, so you it might is. as well do it. Yes, it is. And you never know; you might get a new fan, and right. So you got to do it. Right. But it does suck. Or I'm... only, only fan. Aha. Uh -huh. Only fan. Yes. That's a uh... joke, heavy. A lot of people are on that. Yeah. OnlyFans is huge. It's insane. Maybe do the next special that way. <laughs> they they did start... a roast on there. Yeah. Sorry, yeah, I stepped on. They your did bit. two roasts on there. Oh, really? Well, Whitney and Bert. Were on oh there. yeah, wow. on OnlyFans. Yeah, they. I think they're trying to legitimize and go over to like non. Is that pussy. the new platform? That's one of them. It's either that or Reddit. Ah, I'm scared of Reddit. Yeah. Tear yeah. It down. I. I. Uh, one of the OnlyFans. I guess the creator, of the OnlyFans, was at my show in Miami. And and Whitney just gave him my number, so he's like, "I got a bunch of chicks here," huh. and I was like, "Don't be so OnlyFans all the time." <laughs> right. you know? Maybe suggest a restaurant we could go to. Yeah. You know? <laughs> but damn, yeah, did you go? I did. We were we were off to the next off to the next gig. That'd be funny if you hooked up with a girl and she's like, "That'll be five ninety nine." You are an OnlyFan. Yeah. Women, I feel like every woman just like sells pictures of their feet. Who are these feet people? Yeah. They're huge. Yeah, they're out there. He's one. They, they oh. hide. They hide in the woods. <laughs> these feet people. Well, that's more of the, them responding to the demand from men. Right. For sure. Right. I mean, we demand feet now. I feel like yeah. Are you guys feet guys? I'm not. I wish yeah, I was because yeah. there's feet everywhere. Yeah. yeah. The, the sandals, the open yeah. toe, the beach. It's 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 a, it's a jackpot. I, I like pussy. Yeah. You, you don't see that around. Yeah. And if yeah. you do, it's never good. It's always a lady on the <laughs> I sidewalk. I hope his wife's not listening. <laughs> no, I mean, like I'm saying, random puss. Yeah. Yeah. You don't never see clam out in the wild. Right. That's true. <laughs> right. Clam. You know. But what's the attraction to feet though? What? Uh, anyone. What, I, I what think is it? People find them sexy. Yeah, Are they, it's like another set of hands. I don't find hands. That's the way people. <laughs> uh, me, I'm, I'm an well, elbow. You find man. a hand job. <laughs> yes, yeah. a hand job. A foot. No, a foot is another set of hands. No, that's yeah. another one. They'll do foot jobs are a thing. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. It's a weird. There's foot job, hand job, yeah. a boob job, blow job, yeah. blow job, blow job. A lot yeah, of jobs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> keep doing a country. Good, this is a Seinfeld bit. <laughs> yeah, right. What a country. It's a Someone good Someone takes your girlfriend, they're taking your jobs. <laughs> <laughs> we need more jobs. That's what Obama said. <laughs> These prostitutes are taking our jobs. <laughs> <laughs> There's boob jobs. Steve jobs. <laughs> <laughs> what are we drinking here? Tech bust. Oh, that was up yeah. to Steve Jobs. Oh, and welcome back, Beer Juba. Oh, yeah. You've been all over the world. Yeah. 
He got his fill of lady boys and he's back for more. Yeah, he got a t- <laughs> yeah. tug job. All yeah. right. <laughs> mm. I thought you guys would all be drinking Bud Lights. Uh, or as I call it, gender fluid. <laughs> all right. But well, Budweiser is still for straight guys. But yeah, heavy. Bud Light. Is, oh my God. You got to pull it's up the. two options. This is. Right. I, I can't stop watching this old ad. Remember the Coors Light uh, twins commercials? And the twins. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, this is what beer commercials oh, yeah. used to be. Pull this up, Matt. It's on YouTube. Just the. Uh, well, wait. What, how would you? God, you're pulling that up. That. How would your? We cut you off completely there. Oh, it was you. awesome. I mean, saw a lot of lady boys. Saw okay. a lot of beaches, and then uh, not not actually. I, I stayed on the islands, but uh, hung out everywhere and like saw a bunch of stuff. Went to like. Uh, I, mean, I went all over like nine different countries. And wow. Then, uh, saw some We Might Be Drunk fans hey. in, in Taiwan. Shout really? Out to Sean Taiwan. And wow. Yeah. We have a, quite a following there apparently, and they showed me around. It was awesome. We like to Taiwan on. There you uh, go. Oh. <laughs> See you all in hell. <laughs> we just lost our Thai fans. <laughs> <laughs> Taiwanese. <laughs> Thailand, Taiwan. Different, right? Yes. You turn into William Shatner. What the hell? <laughs> what the hell was that? <laughs> what? Play this ad real quick. Uh, this is what beer commercials used to be. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, you, you go the fuck. fuck is this? this isn't the ad. That was like when I was about to blow a load and they show the guy's face. <laughs> in the go just type in the Coors Light Twins. Ad, I man. did. What That's what came up. There's there other ones. You were a bad Google bitch. I found this instantly. What year are we talking? It said 2001. Wow, that was when Here I graduated high school. Meanwhile, he probably wrote it about his children. Oh, dude, you yeah. can't even hit a quarterback like that. That's dirty. All right. It was a different time, folks. <laughs> This was not even weird. That was normal. No, that was normal. Just Don Draper in a, in a room. What do people like? Uh, twins. Uh, Fucking uh, twins. Uh, this is this is this is what it used to be. Just like the most pandering shit. Watching my team win. Yeah. Yeah. This right. is the most pandering yeah, shit right. ever. And that's course like. Can you imagine what course was? Oh man. Good point. Dude, it was uh just football eating too much. Yeah. And Twins. Twins. They, Twins. Did a, they did a thing of it. It wasn't just football. Movie. It was violent quarterback sacks. Yeah. I love that. Like, can, you can see the CTE happening. <laughs> right. <laughs> and then cut the twins. Uh. They should do one now, but it's just like shit you don't like. I hate all these mass shootings. <laughs> <laughs> Toxic <laughs> masculine. <laughs> but I like twins. <laughs> it cuts it t- like the Minnesota twins. Yeah. <laughs> Damn, uh, it's really uh, the, it, beer commercials went a different way. Yeah. yeah. Let me just say back to the, the hand job, foot job, <laughs> blow job. Okay. Hand job is good. Yeah. Foot job is good. Blow job, good. Boob job is worked on. You see what I'm saying? I you fuck a foot, you fuck a hand, you fuck a mouth for yeah. a blow job, hand job, foot job, but a boob job means you got your boobs done. Right. It's called a titty fuck. Ooh. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Shouldn't have brought it up. <laughs> yeah. I think no. I got something there. No. Yeah, those guys all do. One is three of them are all work, for the, and for one the is dick. getting is like the object you're getting. Work yeah, done to. yeah. It's not yeah. fucking tits. Yeah. Whereas a fucking a foot a is a butt foot job, job though. Is a. Oh yeah, butt, butt job. Yeah. No, no, butt no. job means you got to lift. Yes. Yeah, lift. Yeah. 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 All right. Mm. Interesting. A not- lift in England <laughs> is an elevator. Yes. <laughs> or a, the opposite of Uber. <laughs> okay. All right. Back to a twins. And twins. <laughs> <laughs> that's, what, that's what beer used to be. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I, I was reading about them because the guys who made it, like, they're like, yeah, you can't. They hated it. And they wanted it to sound like a Limp Bizkit song. They're right. like, this is like America. Yeah. You know, and they get, it's hilarious that someone wrote that jingle. I know. Yeah. Someone's job. Got paid yeah. a lot of money for that. Right. <laughs> and they said they hated it. They had like, they had a meeting. I read this article about it. They said everyone hated it. And they had this meeting. They're like, this idea sucks. But then they heard all their other ideas and they were way worse. Oh. And they like, say they took it to a focus group and everybody was like high five, <laughs> chest bumping each other like, oh, I guess we, we suck. Yeah. <laughs> Just fucking people in the thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, dude. It was, uh, but apparently they're like, trust us, the twins thing is going to work. And it fucking blew up. This was huge. Yeah. It blew up. 
You know what? Oh, sorry. It came out. It was like I think it came out like right before 9/11 too. I think it was like early. Right. Yeah. Back before it all went to shit. (laughs) Yeah. What about the Twin Towers? Sorry. Oh, Oh, Twin Towers. That's great. That's great. Twin. (laughs) What about the uh, Real Men of Genius? That was another Bud Light ad, and that was killer. Was that Bud Light? Yeah, that was a really well done ad. Is it ironic that that's a Coors Light commercial that came out during the Bush administration? <laughs> Inside job. <laughs> uh, Bush Light. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, all those commercials. Remember Budweiser was the frogs, too? Oh, yeah. that was Bud big. Budweiser. That was like just f- sloppy frogs. Yeah. yeah. Then there Damn. was What's Up? Oh, uh, yeah. Was that Bud Light? What was that? Or is that Taco Bell? What's up? They even did it on Scream, just, the movie. Yeah. Hanging around. Commercials were big. Bud. Everyone watched them. Yeah. Budweiser. Now we skip them all. We were forced to watch them. You were forced, and it yeah. brought the country together. Yeah. All right. What do we got here? What are you doing? Oh, do you remember this one? This is a takeoff of the Ann Twins one. Okay. <laughs> no, this is way before Ann Twins, dude. Uh, oh, it was? Oh, yeah. It must be. It's 90s. This is early 90s. Yeah. I guess all these ads were the this same back then. This blew my mind when I saw it. <laughs> See, the beauty of this joke or this sketch is there's no hate. You know. It's just they're having a blast. <laughs> Oh, Farley, so good. There's not one word in this ad. Gold. I think, I think there's a tagline at the end. <laughs> <laughs> the double take. The flip up. If you've got a big thirst and you're gay, reach for a cold, tall bottle. Of That's Phil Hartman. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. So great. Gold. Beer, beer is fucking. It's it's just the commercials used to be so damn funny. And now it's like, oh, what are the commercials? Oh, do they still have beer commercials? I don't know. Yeah. Commercials are all But it's like Corona. Now. It's like um, a oh, bunch yeah. of your friends on the beach, and it's like, how'd the meeting go? It's like, killed it. <laughs> oh, that's yeah. what that's what like a, a commercial because we used to make fun of our roommate and Dan Soder. We used to make fun of our roommate Pete because it's like, oh, he's a walking Corona commercial. Yeah. Uh-huh. That's how he is with his friends. It's like, how was the meeting? Killed it. So <laughs> everybody cheers. Is right. It's like oh, that's the, what the it Heineken is ad where the dude was just always on a boat. Like every dude was just partying on a boat. I'm oh, like this yeah. is not connecting your average Heineken drinker. Probably right. no, you know? no. I think Heineken's mostly black. Is it? Is I it? think it's a black beer. Yep, my black friends drink it. Yeah. Wow. Same with mine. <laughs> we got the same friend. <laughs> <laughs> Chris Allen's ears are buzzing. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking Che. Che always drinks Heineken. Has he? Oh, does he? Mm-hmm. Who this is good, Molson. by the way. What, what are we drinking? What Canadians. Is that's um, yeah. that's like a Brazilian limonada. It's just like a Brazilian limeade. So you, good. Yours is spiked with rum. That's just straight up limeade. Oh, With okay. a little bit of like sweet condensed milk. The frothiness oh, wow. is what makes it. Yeah, yeah. Usually you blend it up, but I don't want to cause like a ruckus. So These I guys are getting drunk, and this is a sports drink. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go Mike, I made you a Powerade on the rocks. Yeah, it's yeah, a yeah. coconut those, flavor. There's electrolytes in you. I like Brazilian ones better because they don't have the pussy hair in it. That's uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, no, those are just crushed up real fine. Mm. Uh-huh. It's lovely. You know, for the fiber. Are they ladyboy hairs, though? Not in Brazil. Okay. <laughs> they don't have hair. Should we do some news? Hell yeah. Woo! I got some news stories queued up. All right. Well, Whoa. We Read, read them off, Salomon. All right. So we have the first one is Jada Pinkett Smith produces a new documentary about Cleopatra claiming that she was black. Mm. History supports that Cleopatra was from northern, it says Greek, but it probably should be, oh, northern Greek descent, uh, but she would have been very fair-skinned. Okay. Mm. What a waste of time. We're trying to pinpoint the <laughs> race of dead people from yeah. thousands of years ago. Yeah. Who cares? Just it's make like her hot. We're right. out of racial problems. I know, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I do kind of like this, though, because it's funny what it's like. Hey, we made this guy white. Everybody's mad, and now it's like, all right, let's make this lady black, and everybody's still mad. So yeah. just make the fucking movie. Yeah, you know, maybe they'll right. make a. We might be drunk. They'll like do a doc on us in like four hundred years, and we're black. Oh yeah, yeah. four hundred cool. years. <laughs> <laughs> they're like, we have footage of them white, and they're like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> what are you thinking? Um, I don't know. Let me check my. Uh... 
Oh Let me man. check my. <laughs> check my you're a, you were right. I thought workhorse. Cleopatra was trans. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's how they should settle it. Hold for applause. <laughs> Either way, it all sounds like a pyramid scheme. <laughs> 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 all right, put that in the hand job, tug if, job. If you pile. if you disagree with uh, Jada's vision for Cleopatra, Will Smith shows up and smacks you. <laughs> hey, <laughs> I like it. Um, Cleopatra appreciate. was married to Mark Anthony, who was the Fresh Prince of Egypt. <laughs> uh, I think making up stuff in movies is good sometimes, you know, because in every Jada Pinkett movie, she has hair. Oh, yeah. good yeah. point. Good point. But I think if you check, um, Cleopatra did have alopecia. <laughs> was that her daughter? <laughs> Fire. Yeah. <laughs> We're rolling. <laughs> All right. So we got another story here. Oh, okay. what do you got? A man in China was sentenced to six months in jail. Uh, is that scarring or scaring? For scaring 1,100 of his neighbor's chickens to death. Mm. The man identified only by his surname, Gu. That's G-U. Is that his pronoun? <laughs> <laughs> Snuck onto his neighbor Zong's property and used a flashlight to frighten the chickens in the first incident. That's only the first incident. Oh, now, this sounds like a pretty good way to kill chickens. Yeah. You know, because instead of chopping their heads off or, or murdering right. all of them, you just go with a flashlight and they all die. Yeah. Yeah, they trample each other. By the way, this doesn't make me feel bad about eating chickens. Like, you're a fucking dumb animal if that's how you kill yourself. Yeah. So you deserve to be on a fucking bun. Can I say that We're I object stupid. to this man um, having to be cooped up for six months <laughs> in jail? <laughs> <laughs> um, nice. I think the judge was probably a vegan. Hey, <laughs> that drug was excellent. Uh, it was a jury of uh, three roosters, four turkeys, and uh, five Cornish hens. <laughs> <laughs> Twelve angry hens. Hey, there it is. Yes, uh, that's a feather in your cap. All right. In China, they read the verdict like a fortune cookie. They open it, they open it and then read it. Um, under Chinese law, you have the right to low-main silent. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, count it! Count it! Check out the special. Uh, you know you're not very high in the evolutionary. <laughs> like as animals, you're, like if you trample each other, humans, yeah. we don't do that. We don't trample each other to death and, unless it's a, Yeah. All right. <laughs> well, when I order like a chicken parm, Thanks. I always ask. <laughs> Can we get him back to some ladyboy island? Uh, the timing, impeccable. Um, when I order a chicken parm or something, I'm like, how are these chickens killed? Were they afraid? Were they scared to death? <laughs> they trample each other? That's the dish I want. <laughs> nice. I would pluck that one out. All right. <laughs> uh, what are we we're still doing puns, I heard he bird flew the coop. Mm. Timing. You just had to wet your beak, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Do you want me to go on the next one? Yeah. I'm yeah. Okay. Uh, oh, boy. A woman who was addicted to pulling out and he had me own... at pulling out. <laughs> uh, a woman who was addicted to pulling out and eating her own hair mm. had a giant hairball measured 15 centimeters removed from her stomach, according to a medical journal. Yeah. Wow. Thing. Okay. It's called a hair job. Uh, <laughs> this actually uh, happened to me, too. I, I, I didn't pull my hair. I just ate at a diner. <laughs> <laughs> Not Brazilian. But instead, what she says, it goes, there's some food in my hair. Instead, there's a hair in my food. <laughs> right. <laughs> All right. That is like, what, what is that thing people have where they, they pull your, you pull your hair out? That's like a thing. There was that, remember that movie, Young Adult? She yes, like, yes. I had an ex who did that, and she had a, a bald spot. That's a... What's that called? That's called that's some kind of a disease. It was some Mark, anxiety thing. Yeah. Mark and used to date Ed Bagley Jr. <laughs> 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 when someone has a lot of hair, I guess she thinks it's an all you can eat. <laughs> 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 all right, anyone want to try that first word? Trica Trictolomania. Trick trichotillomania. There you go. What about it? Before you pull out your own hair. Oh, known as trick. And it's something different if you, when you eat it, right? Pulling out your own hair and eating it. And when you pull out someone else's hair, that's a world star video. <laughs> <laughs> it's also funny that uh, there's so many people do this. This is pretty common. Yeah. And they In put... show business. Yeah. <laughs> pulling out your own hair. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but they'll, people eat like couch cushion or they're like styrofoam what? peanuts. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There's all these uh, documentaries yeah. about that. Yeah. No, that's just eating if you eat at Subway. <laughs> <laughs> But then it's weird when a girl won't blow you. You're like, come on. You need couch cushions? You can't blow me? Can't blow. Uh, what if I put my dick in the couch? 
Does that help? <laughs> <laughs> this is like my strange addiction. Mm. If, I, if I put my dick in the couch, I come. <laughs> <laughs> okay, from chicken to beef, we have beef star David Cho. We're slam- pushing for the pushing. <laughs> All right, sorry. Uh, David Cho was slammed after a podcast detailing rapey behavior mm. and resurfaced. Uh, social media user, users are questioning Cho's casting in a Netflix show, pointing out a 2014 podcast where he said he was a successful rapist. Well, at least he's successful. <laughs> <laughs> Better than a broke rapist. Uh, Everyone hates I hope <laughs> Netflix makes a show called Rapey Behavior so we can bring back Kevin Spacey. <laughs> <laughs> I miss that guy. Right. <laughs> he's good. I think season two of Beef is going to be called Beef and Broccoli. <laughs> <laughs> Nice. <laughs> <laughs> I heard they were first suspicious of his rapey behavior when the casting director said that she didn't want him on the show and he wouldn't take no for an answer. <laughs> so. The show, the uh, podcast was called Erection Quest, by the way. <laughs> that was, he was on a porn um, show. Is the rape like Netflix where she's like, are you still raping me? <laughs> oh Here's a rape we suggest next. Yeah. By the way, this is a podcast we played in 14 years when we try and have Netflix shows. Yeah. Yeah. They could have a rapey, a successful rapist section. It's just Harvey movies. It's Miramax. <laughs> it's called Miramax. <laughs> um, so I guess what, what does he do? Go to podcast prison? Um, he goes to some kind of a virtual. He has to do Zoom. Only Zoom shows now. <laughs> he has to get at least one thousand five star reviews, so he's right, not out. Right. It's called yeah. Luminary. So, do you, do you guys know who this guy is? I well, actually his name is. Uh, can I get the joke? His name is David. <laughs> his name is David Chose, which implies consent. Ah. <laughs> his body has chose. <laughs> Sorry, what were you saying? Wait, uh, do you know who he is? Oh, wait, we have more. Oh no, um, I was just going to say that copyright infringement is also a crime. That's what he was complaining about, that they that they posted the clip, really, and it was copyright infringement. Oh, so, yeah. wow! His admission of rape versus, <laughs> versus. copyright infringement. Yeah. Right? Yeah, he didn't consent to them using the clip. Right. So Got this it. guy Cho, he's an artist, and in 2008 or 2010, when Facebook started, um, they commissioned him to paint a mural on their new offices, mm. and it was like a fifteen thousand dollar gig. And I can't remember the guy's name who, the Napster guy. Uh, he was part of Facebook. Yeah. And he said to Cho, he's like, take stock and set instead. And he said, no, 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 I need the 15 grand. He was like, trust me, take the stock and set instead. And then in when it went public, whatever year, he made $250 million that day on that $1,500 painting, where it was, $15,000 painting. So why is he still acting? I don't think he's an actor. I think they just cast him in this. Oh, my God. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So he did take the stock. He took the stock wow. and made two hundred fifty million. Wow. wow! Well, his whole argument on the podcast was that he was doing. He was an artist, and he was kind of like doing. I guess it was. Correct me if I'm wrong. He was doing a character. He wasn't speaking authentically, no. or he was making up a story for entertainment reasons. Because mm. that's his. That's when they, people called him on it. They're like, "Oh, you're you're admitting to a rape." He goes, "No, no, no. I'm I'm an artist, and I'm telling a story." From an artist's perspective, I don't know. Whoa! Yeah, yikes! That'd be a great. Th- if more this guy's either a rapist or the best actor. <laughs> <laughs> Ted Bundy was like, it was a joke. <laughs> <laughs> I was doing a character. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, Brando had sex with women on film in. Uh, yeah, the Tango it? in Paris. Tango, last Tango in Paris. Yeah, and it wasn't written into the script. What? And he just had sex with her. Right there. Yeah, he, they raped, yeah, he raped a woman. Yeah, that's rape. And he could say, I was acting or something. I don't know. Yeah. What the Whoa. Fuck is, yeah. But he really had sex with her right there. It's yeah. like when people smoke on stage and they're like, ah, it's part of the act. Right. So they allow it. Yeah. Weird. It's not exactly the same. No. <laughs> <laughs> I like that we all played <laughs> along with that for a second. We're like, like oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> a cigarette's oh. kind of like a sexual oh assault. My God. <laughs> the Surgeon General says no to both, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> smoking. By the way, does he uh, need to be, he's not a surgeon or a general. No. That's a weird term. No. Surgeon General. I love he tells you not to smoke, but he won't tell you why x-rays are eight grand. 
<laughs> it's, like, it's eight grand for x-rays like smoking is terrible yeah all right kids have a good one i don't like that t- it's up there with landlord it's too grand yeah surgeon yeah. general yeah. you're neither it's like lawyer <laughs> astronaut <laughs> you know? uh, oh we got another new story here all it right says, uh wearable bean bags are here mm. a mm. japanese company comes up with an innovative solution was this a problem before? Yeah, what was this solution? <laughs> were, people yeah. go, were people complaining about beanbags? <laughs> well, this is why Japan's better yeah. than us, because we just make our own. We're right. just obese. We just sit on our own fat ass. Yeah. They have to actually strap a bag to them. That's what, like, it looks like Chris Christie there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it does look like they're like, wearing a fat suit. A yeah. Little bit. A little, a very Gwyneth yeah. and Shallow Hell. Yeah, <laughs> it's very um, nutty professor. Yeah. Yeah. Hercules. Does this come with a vagina candle? <laughs> <laughs> Whew, you know she lit one after she won that courtroom thing. Ooh. I love that. She's skiing into people. More celebrities should just ski into people. Right. Is that what it's like, well, yeah, well, we wanna... don't, We'll never know what happened. It's her. Ver- it was her versus an optometrist, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. He was some kind of a doctor, and that's great. That an eye doctor. Skiing. He didn't see that coming. Oh. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> uh, <laughs> people are beanbag chairs. Japan is in. They're unbelievable. Yeah. They really are. It's like you know, people are complaining for they have nowhere to sit, and these guys come up with the solutions. Beanbag yeah. chair. People become beanbag chairs. This is the only way you see a fat Japanese person. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. Really. <laughs> but it's like you sit on them and then they ha- they they tell you their own opinions. You have to listen to them. Yeah. <laughs> For like two hours. By the way, it shows how much food we have here that we made chairs out of food. Mm, it's full yeah. of beans. <laughs> you can eat that. It's a protein heavy seat. <laughs> All right, we got another story here. Uh, the U.S. government is storing 1.4 billion pounds of cheese in a cave in Missouri. Yeah. Apparently, mm. the government has been storing away cheese for decades, even since the 70s, when former President Jimmy Carter offered dairy farmers a break by having the government buy and store cheese from farmers. Mm. That's what I call Brie Larson's pussy, cheese cave. <laughs> Brie? All right. That was a stretch. I heard they were only doing that in, like until recently they just started doing that. Before that, they were storing it in uh, Kirstie Alley, I think. <laughs> <laughs> uh, woo! It's okay. She's dead. <laughs> She'll never hear it. It's, 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 it was a cheese me- that killed her. <laughs> Storing it in Smegma Mountain. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I heard it costs a lot. <laughs> Can I, do? I heard it costs a lot of cheddar to keep. <laughs> there we go. It's cheese, uh, cheese cave. That's what I call Swiss bank. Swiss. All right. <laughs> well, isn't uh, cheese mold and doesn't mold grow in caves? So isn't it just no. why are we? True. Understand the first guy to eat cheese was pretty bold. Yeah. Hey, this milk's gone bad. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know if it has. I prefer hiding the cheese to cutting it. <laughs> that's a uh, woo, uh, save that for the corporate gig. <laughs> that's squeaky clean. Woo, you doing some, some birthday parties? They give you one. Uh, you do like a corporate gig, and they give you like one guy. They're like, this guy likes this guy farts a lot. That's a great thing. You just you just pick on a guy for like forty minutes. You're like, but seriously, your gas is a problem. Yeah. <laughs> you're a fucking. You're a slob. Yeah. You're a fucking slob. <laughs> this the this next one. Yeah. They won't let that go. What is it? I keep hearing gays are causing natural disaster. I've heard that my whole life from yeah. like uh, religious people. Yeah, what well, guy who says gay guy who says God sends natural disasters to punish gays has his home destroyed yeah. in a natural disaster. What a horrible way to find out you're gay. <laughs> yeah, <that's it>. uh, <laughs> uh, uh. I think it depends on the disaster. I think you're gay if it's a sinkhole. <laughs> <laughs> like you fall into the, or a mudslide. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I think women are more uh, prone to natural disasters because they take your house. <laughs> <laughs> it is after a few uh, hurricanes, I'm gay. Yeah. <laughs> it is well, doesn't a hurricane or a tornado just blow you into another guy? Basically? <laughs> Good point. Or a cow. <laughs> It's definitely like it's a weird. T- uh, these guys like don't believe in climate change, but they see two clouds forming. They're like, I guess two women just got a back alley abortion somewhere. <laughs> <because this is>. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right. What about gays? I mean, you can't blame them for natural disasters because yeah. they got the rainbow. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, that rainbow is when everything you know the, the clouds clear. Yeah. So and if a hurricane destroys a gay neighborhood, they redecorate quickly. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> yeah. The story blows. Hey, there you go. <laughs> This is oh, wild. This, this one's is wild. hot. All right, hold on. Let me preview this one. 
<laughs> oh my god. And twins. <laughs> <laughs> Should I just go on to the next one? I don't no, know. no, no. This, this is the best story. All right. This is great. This is crazy. All right. Conjoined twins Lapita and Carmen Andarade uh, have shared the details of their lives, in, uh, including the fact that one of them has a boyfriend, even though they both share a vagina. First of all, why are they dressed like they're in the Middle Ages? <laughs> <laughs> wow. wow. Yeah, you're right. It's very Renaissance fair going on here. This is that is crazy. That, yeah. uh, I mean, that's like this is like an ad for noise canceling headphones right here. <laughs> <laughs> you get them Bose headphones, you strap them on the sister. You're like, how good do these work? Really? Yeah, right. right. But that's he's dating true. one and then not the other one. Yeah. Does the other one, one is, feel it? One is. Oh yeah. One, one is vagina. heterosexual and one is asexual. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. It's oh. like having a permanent chaperone on every day. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they share a vagina, so I guess he has, they have to schedule the days differently. It's like I get it Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, <laughs> Wednesday, and Saturday. Right, right. And what does the one who is asexual use the vagina for? Storage. <laughs> uh, Jeez. Get that out of there. I need it. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> Jeez. Storage. One of them is a drug mule. <laughs> Yeah, also, look, I, I grew up with uh, sisters. They can't share anything. So I don't know how that's going to work with the, the masturbating. <laughs> the masturbating. I guess this is like one of those cases where, like, speaking of uh, rapists, this is where you roofied the other sister. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, not, your, not your dame. You no. roofied the other one. Yeah. If yeah. you want to fuck your wife's sister, you're in luck. Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. We don't know how long she's out. <laughs> <laughs> and is this a genre of porn? I don't know. I don't Incest know, threesomes, I guess. <laughs> well, Skin specific. Um, what are they? What kind of twins are they? They are conjoined twins. A conjoined twin threesome. Do you want me to look that up? And that'll bl blow Pornhub probably away. All right, Ooh. let me look it up. Yeah. Conjoined twin threesome. It looks like they're trying to sneak into a movie theater. You know, there's two of them, but they have to dress up. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's done. I just want you to notice that Pornhub didn't <laughs> Thanks populate for on my thing here. All right. I haven't been here before. Ah, <laughs> this looks all too familiar. This is me on the road with my cell phone going, all right, what shall do the job quickest? It would be so great if it just no. finished typing whatever Matt, ah. Matt typed in. <laughs> he put conjoy and it finished well, it. It would be great if Pornhub sent you a message. Just cut it out. Ah. Cut it out. Get back to work. <laughs> Pornhub's oh. like, we're disgusted with what you've been looking up. We've never written an email like this before. Oh, they got it. Conjoined twins. I think it's AI. No. Oh, come on. AI, anal insertion? <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yeah. It's, a mirror. it's just a mirror. That's a yeah. mirror. All right, well, these yeah. gals could clean up. I'm sure this is a new, it's going to be a fetish. Yeah. I wish they would clean Wait up. Wait a minute, one pill per day for bigger size? Hold on, click on that. <laughs> <laughs> click on it. That's good stuff. All right, this is too distracting. It's crazy that they, they share a vagina. Uh, him. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> they share a pussy. Yeah. 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 All right, a German court said that a landlord sunbathing naked in the courtyard of his building wasn't a reason for his tenants to reduce their rental payments. The case uh, involved a building in an upper market residential di district in Frankfurt, uh, which included an office floor rented by a human resources company, HR. Mm. The company withheld rent because it objected, among other things, to the landlord's naked sunbathing. In response, the landlord sued. Interesting. The Nazis are at it again. <laughs> <laughs> Naked sunbathing. Wow. They figure out a way. Yeah. yeah. What's human resources like in Germany? <laughs> <laughs> Do you kindly board the train? <laughs> Damn. So the landlord's the one doing it. Yes. Interesting. And there's a human resources company in the building. Oh, that's a nightmare like, already. That the is a... Uh... That's. I, I mean, I don't know if you should lower the rent, but you should fucking. You should definitely uh, arrest the guy, probably, right? Or. But it's his building. It's his courtyard, right? Yeah. yeah. I guess. Jeez. But it's like uh, I need something fixed up here, and it's like I don't have time right now. I'm nude sunbathing. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You see <laughs> Just me. See the nude sunbathing. Also, that's not great for the HR company because some lady comes in like some guy looked at my tits. He's like, "Hey, bitch, look outside. We got bigger fish to fry." All right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> As a ball sack in the courtyard. <laughs> You're worried about getting called, uh, you know. It's always terrible looking people tits. who are these nudists. Always. 
Yeah. It's yeah. Like, and they're just so, so like, we got the right to do it. And people just, I mean, check out. If you were just, if you were just a little bit hotter. Yeah. You know? The wrong people have body positivity, right? The <laughs> yeah. wrong people are like, like, we need to be positive about our body. I'm like, you got to fucking go to the gym. Yeah. 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 We, we need like. Yeah. Hit the naked gym. <laughs> yes. I was in a yoga class last week and there's a dude in there fucking, it's like a fat dude with a ponytail <laughs> in his underwear. Yeah. And he's got a pierced nipple. And I'm like, dude, pick like <laughs> one of those things. You, can't, you don't get to do all those things. <laughs> yeah. Good point. Yeah. Underwear? Underwear. That should be, he's got to put shorts no on. No one says shit, though. Wow, because it's too freewheeling, man. Yeah, We're yeah. all free. But and... it's, we it's weird because yoga is freewheeling, but it's very, like, at least a Bikram yoga, and I know he's a rapist, but the Bikram <laughs> yoga is very, very He's hot. a successful rapist. He's a successful rapist. <laughs> yeah. He left the country, actually. That mm. documentary came out, and he left the country. Mm. Yeah. And now it's like, I guess he's out of our jurisdiction or something. Wow. I don't know. <laughs> he I said, guess. namaste, and he went on his way. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I'm going to stay. Right. Nah, I'm going to go. Uh, okay, so Iranian-born crypto entrepreneur Sina Estavi purchased the NFT of Jack Dorsey's first- Estavi? Estavi, <laughs> oh, baby. Estavi, baby, yeah. Estavi, uh, baby. Jack Dorsey's first tweet- for $2.9 million in March 2021, he announced on Twitter that he wished to sell the NFT and pledged to give 50% of the proceeds to charity. The auction closed. Selling price? $279. Wow. So that's a $2.9 million bath. That's a hilarious auction. When yeah. you're expecting it to go to 2.9 million yeah. at least, and it gets 297 dollars, I know <laughs> you just left there going, I don't. You okay. know, Elon Musk is like, finally, someone else lost money on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> Not just me. That'd be great if he bought the NFT. <laughs> it's yeah. 297, but you get a blue check mark. <laughs> How come some people get the blue check for, and they I don't mean, pay? It's all whacked up. Now. It's all wacky. Yeah. Because some people bought it and then they sent it back at something. I don't know. But now I feel like it's like uncool to have the blue check. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> well, because people could buy it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You had a great tweet about that. The class ring. Oh, yeah. That was great. I said basically like <laughs> whoever pays for it is like basically the dude that bought a class ring. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. He's great. I bought the class ring and I regret it. My, I was like, Dad, can I buy it? I need $100. And he was like, you're not going to wear it. And then I bought it and never wore it. Hmm. Totally regret it. Yeah, I remember mentioning to my dad, he was like, don't buy that fucking stuff. I know. Thing. Yeah. I wear it now because I'm not married. So it's like, I want people to know I'm dedicated to the class. Of <laughs> <laughs> Doing donuts in the parking lot, dog. <laughs> I stayed cool forever, just like I wrote in everybody's yearbook. Yeah. <laughs> You're like my Sandler who pulls up and Billy Mann with <laughs> yeah. the Camaro and the yeah. T-tops. <laughs> class rings are fucking weird. Oh, yeah. And Letterman jackets, too. Yeah. I mean, I graduated yeah. high school in Florida, and it's like, get a Letterman jacket. It's a, It's too hot. It's nah. too hot to wear it. Right. And so it's like, we, I got it anyway. Wait, why'd you go to high school in Florida? Sophomore, junior, and senior year. Whoa. Yeah, I was in Ohio and then went to Florida. Sophomore, junior, senior year, graduated in Florida. I'd and say then, that's an upgrade. Yeah, yeah. It's great. Florida was great, man. I had a yeah. great high school experience. Really? Yeah, yeah really great one. All these guys talk about, I don't know how you guys like view your high school experience most people was like it was a nightmare it sucked i hated it it's like i loved it i loved mm. every minute of it it's like Whoa. good people around good friends sports was just wonderful hell yeah, yeah. what's but then it's like if you have a great high school you get it either way if you if you if your high school experience sucks then you suffer then and then you got to the real world you're like oh my god i feel like myself yeah but then if you have a great high school experience then you get thumped by the real world right so it's like you're getting it one way or another <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, wait, what city? Boca Raton. Oh, man. So you're on the beach. It was on the beach. It was beach on the weekends. It was really great. Yeah. A lot of juice. A lot of juice. Good people. I said it like it's a good thing. You said it was like a bad <laughs> thing. No, I, I, I've done gigs there. I love Boca Raton. Love it. Florida is an yeah. underrated comedy place. Yeah. Oh, I mean, yeah. Like, there, there are the, the awful cities are awful, but the great cities are like, like Orlando's fucking good crowds. I feel Orlando, like. Tampa. Tampa. Yeah, great. Um, the West Coast, too. Naples. Yeah, Tampa. I hate Naples. Are yeah. you fucking kidding me, I, dude? Because it was no. like it was. A, I'm not gonna. It was like an older. It was. I thought that was a joke you were was, making. No, no, it was uh, an older crowd. Have you not seen my merch? Pull up my merch. <laughs> it was an older merch. crowd. Pull up I the merch. That was great. <laughs> <laughs> You fucking like Naples? <laughs> I loved it. 
Man, what else did you like? Uh, Germany? <laughs> <laughs> Love Naples. Damn, someone made, someone's profiting off a blue version of that shirt. That ain't me. Uh-oh. Oh, my And God. a sweatshirt. Damn. Damn. It's funny, those fucking, those, I only really sell them hard in, like, Florida, because yeah. everyone in Florida, if I'm in Florida, everyone buys those. But other words, they're like, eh. But in Florida, right. everyone's yeah. like, yeah, fuck Naples. I got to send this to my dad. I'm like, jeez, <laughs> all right. Uh, don't like it. Wow, you love Naples. I did love it. But yeah, uh, what's that other? What's that town above Miami? Fort Lauderdale, mm-hmm. great yeah, town, great, great, great that, club. What is that the Dania? Dania. Club? That's a great uh, club. Great yeah, club. Dania Improv. Miami's a little bit of a a slug fest because they're all hot, they and yeah, yeah, coked they're up. Fucking, they're too vapid. And Everybody's hot. Yeah. hot. Everybody can rollerblade off on a joke <laughs> that they don't like. Yes, yes. Oh, man, I did the Fontaine Blue when I was there. It's like one of those like like they're like Sinatra played here. I'm like, I don't think they've updated it. Since then. <laughs> <laughs> it's you know? the danger fields of Dade County. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like Sinatra. Sinatra punched a woman right in that corner right there. Like, <laughs> yeah, people, uh, Sinatra's romanticized. I love him and everything, but he it, he was just wildly unstable. He was oh, a manic yeah. depressive who like hit women and oh, yeah. had maniac. mob ties. He was a maniac. And I think he tried to get Ava Gardner back by like just shooting a bunch of holes in a mattress. <laughs> <laughs> he was like, I'm crazy without you. And she came back. Wow. Uh, yeah. I should yeah. try that. That worked. <laughs> <laughs> that worked in the 50s. Yeah. And he, what was the girl? He's passionate. I'm like, he's got a gun. <laughs> he's got and he's unstable. <laughs> yeah. What was the guy, the, the Rosemary's baby? The lady. Polanski? Oh, oh, uh, Mia Farrow. Mia Farrow. He was 60 and she was 21 when they were married. Yeah. And he was like, get her out of that picture. And they were like, no, I'm, we're keeping her. And she like went down to the set and raised hell. And then he flew out of there and brought and divorced her. Apparently should... that scene in The Godfather where he's like, I've had every girl in the world. And he ruins a girl, the guy Waltz. Yeah. Uh, the Sinatra character, that's supposed to be about Mia Farrow. Oh. Like, I gave her singing lessons, dancing lessons. And then your guinea charm, you pulled her away. Oh, wow. wow. Look at that. Yeah. 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 He's like, you shouldn't be making Hollywood movies. You should be fixing my toupee at home <laughs> like a lady. Yeah. <laughs> Fun fact. His dad owned a bar named Sinatra's, and he had to change the name to o- O'Connor's because you couldn't have an Italian couldn't own a bar. That's great. I think that should apply today. <laughs> <laughs> I think that should translate. And I think out. Irish shouldn't be allowed to have restaurants. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they need not apply. Yeah. Okay. We got another story here. Uh, Japanese police have arrested two men who posted a video on social media showing one eating pickled ginger ginger mm. with his chopsticks directly from the communal container. Is that mm. a garbage can? <laughs> oh, I kind of didn't understand the story. Uh, I think he it's took communal... chopsticks and he ate it out of the communal ginger bowl. Oh, okay. So it's, it's just for everyone and you're just eating oh, like yeah. this, getting your germs in there. Mm-hmm. Uh, I like their impolite is our like normal way of doing things. <laughs> it's, it's like, true. yeah, it's just accepted in our <laughs> <Yeah>. society. <laughs> They're like, whoa, this is forbidden. This is a right. law. Right. It's part of a series of pranks that have hit sushi chains and become known as sushi terrorism. Man, terrorism there is so much lighter. <laughs> we have people flying into buildings and blowing up stadiums. We shoot up schools. They're like, you ate the communal food. <laughs> You're a monster. Yeah. <laughs> He's the ginger terrorist. <laughs> Our thing would be sucker punching a ginger person. Yes, that would yes. Be. Our ginger terrorists were the Murdochs. <laughs> uh, there we go. That's our last can I, get a, wow. can I get another one of these uh, beer yeah, juice? This is a okay, buddy. I Very like, nice. Amazing. Very good. You don't want to spend the summer at the grocery store or prepping meals? Let mm. Factor do the cooking for you. Yes. While you keep crushing your health goals, Factor America's number one ready to eat meal kit delivers nutritious meals straight to your door. It's the easiest way to stay on track while saving tons of time. I've tried their stuff. It's pretty damn good. Oh, yeah. I like them. I love the smoothies are good. Mm -hmm. I'm a big fan. Love Factor. Always fresh, never frozen, takes two minutes to prepare. Yeah, I mean, I I had a ton of these, and they're all really good. You Mm -hmm. need an extra boost to support your wellness goals this summer. Try Protein Plus meals with 30 grams of protein or more per serving. You don't always have time to cook. You don't always have you know, want to waste a super amount of money uh, doing seamless with yep. all those hidden charges. Oh. You order a fucking Italian sub, it's $47. Exactly, it. exactly. You're like, you where, where the hell's the, the money guy. going? Factor meals come in a variety of lifestyle options. If you're vegan, vegetarian, keto, calorie counting, there's something delicious waiting for you. Head to factormeals.com slash drunk50 and use code use the code drunk50 to get 50% off your first box. That's a lot. That's a, I mean, that's big. Some of these discounts, you're not getting that. So 50% off. Here, that's here. code drunk50 at factormeals.com slash drunk50. Wow. 
50% off your first box. That is a great deal. Hey, hey, boys, since Manscaped has already made your balls nice and fresh, it's time to do something about that face, that ugly mug. Manscaped has just announced their brand new Beard Hedger Pro Kit. Good to mix those up. You don't want to shave your face with something that smells like your taint. The Beard Hedger gives you 20 uh, hair cutting lengths all at the turn of a dial. No more changing out attachments, and it's waterproof, so you can shave in Katrina. And since Manscaped wants you to have all the tools for the job, they're throwing in a beard, brush, comb, scissor, just to make you look like a million bucks. Tell them how, fatty! Get 20% off and free shipping with the code DRUNK at manscaped.com. That's 20% off and free shipping at manscaped.com and use code DRUNK. The Manscaped Beard Hedger Pro Kit, the premier solution to face grooming. Yeehaw! Hey, hey, folks. We're, we Might Be Drunk is brought to you by Tushy. Hello. Taco Tuesday was a great time, but let's be honest, now things are rough down there. Thank God for Hello Tushy, the bidet that keeps things clean. No matter what junk you put in your body, you got to use Tushy to wipe that b-hole clean. Especially now with the, uh, the uh, what's it called, uh, fornicating and the, you know, the old... Uh, eat in the back door, if you know what I mean. That's very popular these days. And you don't want to have a nice snail trail back there. And you definitely don't want to have a couple of shreds of TP and a peanut and a piece of corn. So get yourself some tushy, folks, and clean that back porch. Because people want to go in there. Yeah! So, the Hello Tushy Bidet cleans two times better than wiping and prevents poop particles from spreading to your hands and everything you touch. It attaches to your existing toilet, requiring no electricity or additional plumbing, and it cuts toilet paper usage by 80%. Save the planet, you kooks. If you do the math, Tushy pays for itself in just a few months. Every Hello Tushy bidet attachment comes with a 60-day risk-free guarantee and a 12-month warranty. With over 100,000 five-star reviews, see why millions of people already love Hello Tushy. And be part of taking care of business the cleaner way. Go to hellotushy.com forward slash drunk and use promo code drunk to get 10% off plus free shipping on your bidet order. On your first one, 10% off. That's hellotushy.com slash drunk for 10% off. Get on it, folks. Woo, that's good stuff. You do. Boy, I'll tell you. great job. That must have been 56 jokes we rattled off wow. there. Jokes. We were like, we haven't Becky Owen on. We should do news stories. He's a he's a, a joke smith. You got one of my favorite jokes ever, the one about the sign up to be a detective online. Oh, yeah, that's online. a great joke. How's the detective? Yeah. Oh, the joke is I went online to become a private detective. It was a private detective school online and I paid online and I never heard from them again. So um I thought this is either uh how's it go? <laughs> I forgot. Either this I just is, got ripped off or I just this got is ripped my off first or case. This is my first case, yeah. That's a great fucking joke. I believe that's in your first Fallon. Yeah. Yeah, that's a yeah. great set. Check that out. Folks. You still do late night sets. You're like one of the few comics where like your material works well for a late night set. Yeah. It's like, you know, it's like an old school type of comedy. Mark and I love that too. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Getting together because we're all good in like we're good in five minutes. Yes, you yes. I mean? Which like is we, rare now. It's Once rare you get to now. know me, I suck, but for five minutes. <laughs> for five minutes. Yeah. Because we're all of the uh I think we're all of the mindset. It's like hit them hard. Yeah. And then get the confidence with the first joke. Yes. And then just like Every seven seconds. And then even after the seven seconds, you still look at the joke and go, well, is there a punchline on the way in? Yes. You know? Exactly. So, like, so I think we all I, look I at Jack like hammered them like four times really hard. And then I'm like, I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> you get the light. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I agree. Because I think with club comedy, you have to you have to win them over. Right, right, That's like half right. the battle. Yeah. To getting them to trust the, oh, this guy, we should listen to him. Right. Yeah. But how are you finding guys? Because you guys have followings now big following so how has it changed like on the road where it's like you had to earn it like that and yeah. now people know you yeah and there is that better is it better it's nice but yeah. it's also bittersweet because you're like is this good or are you guys just like me you guys just into me and like right. my act and right. know me and get my cadence or is this actually funny 
So then you got to try it again in front of strangers. Right. Just yeah, you get that momentum it. laugh. That's totally yeah. true, Mark. Is uh, you get they get that pop sometimes because they know your rhythm and they know you, and and that's why you got to try it. I think at the cellar where they they don't know you. Oh yeah. yeah. You know. So it's yeah. It's it's. But you were saying like we were talking off air where it's like you can come at them with something edgy. And it's if it's your crowd, they already know you. Yeah. So it's like you don't need that much of a setup for to to buffer. Yes. But if they don't know you, you come off looking like a psycho unless you pad it yeah. on both sides of the joke. Like it's the hard setup. to open with a Holocaust joke. <laughs> you're right. But you have for to... not your crowd. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yes. Which but, gets annoying because you're like, no, no, this is good. I know, it, I know, it's jarring right. for you guys because you don't know me. But this is good. So right. it, it does get annoying. But I get it. They don't know you. Right. So they're like, whoa, is this a Nazi? You know, right. well, you got to earn it, right? I mean, even for your crowd, it's funny. Where like, even for I think, if I'm on the road, even for the crowd that comes to see me, I I do have to to some degree earn it because not all like most of them are fans, but sometimes they like they bring a friend who they, who doesn't sure know who you are. sure. But you got, placement still matters. Like you don't want to come out too hard. It's right. like it's like going out on a date and immediately you're like sex, right? Sex. right. Yeah. You have to you have to be like, so yeah. what do you like? So, yeah. so you kind of you know. But if you've been dating a couple it. years, then <laughs> that's sex. what it is. Sex. That's sex. what it is. Yeah. But I, but if you're, I still find that you have to like, kind of like if I have an, like an abortion joke. I'm like, let me put that at like minute eighteen. Let me like build up maybe some dating stuff up top. Maybe right. some lighter stuff. Yeah. Just just yeah. ease into it. Work into it chronologically. <laughs> <laughs> Dinner and the dating stuff, yeah. and then the abortion. <laughs> That's hilarious. Then I close on getting arrested in Oklahoma. <laughs> <laughs> That's my closer. <laughs> Can you pull up one of Mike's jokes here. Yeah, I did. Play it. I love. I'm a big fan of. I also think your album is one of the best. Oh, albums I think that you have. If you haven't heard Mike's album, the worst kind of thoughtful. There's a, a 10 minute bus chunk. It's just all about the bus, and it's one of the best bits. I, I just every line is is incredible. By yeah, way, Mike, they said this without you here. So I want oh, you to know that. yes, that's yeah. been said you without guys. you here. And yeah. muscle confusion. Yeah, I believe one like album of the year with a couple things, and yeah. that is so good. It's tight as a drum. Thank you. Thank as a you cheese cave. As a cheese cave. <laughs> it's a tight as a German landlord sphincter. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm a huge boxing fan. I love all kinds of boxing. And uh, I was watching this one fight. It was a female fighter, and her brother was the promoter. And they were interviewing her, and they're like, how did you start fighting? And it's a tragic story. She goes, um, when I was young, I watched my father hit my mother. <laughs> I was too weak to do anything about it, so I learned to fight, and it never happened again. I'm like, wow, that's pretty powerful. Then I thought, but the brother, <laughs> the promoter, <laughs> grew up in the same home. <laughs> so he must have saw the same thing and thought to himself, I can sell tickets to this. <laughs> <laughs> now that's so great because what's impressive about that bit, obviously it's a funny joke, but there's a lot of information to to right. get to the audience there, you know, and right. that is the right. the way you made it so simple yeah. and accessible. That's a skill on its own. But usually, I don't have the patience to get into the bit. I, I need a joke into the bit. Sure, there was no joke into that. Yeah, yeah. So it's like I realized in some bits, like yeah, because I'll see some guys just have the patience and then wait for the payoff. And that's also valuable. So it's just like there was ah. usually I like that joke on the way in. I agree. But there was. I couldn't get one off in there. You know, it but needs to be informational. You've got but the punchline is strong enough. Yeah. Yes, yeah, eight seconds of of setup. Yeah, but that's not a that's not a, a lot, right? You know, and the fact that it was so much information, so concisely and yeah. so simply, that's a skill on its own. Right. So I don't even think you needed the joke. I, I like a joke in the right. setup too, but right. it but wasn't you know, necessary. I mean, I think it's actually. Uh, I don't know how you guys feel about it, but I feel like it, it was it was a, like a stage fright thing that's de developing. It's like punch it up every seven oh, seconds because you don't want to i don't want to sit in silence yeah neither you do they I mean? yeah. yeah but i feel that in your comedy like you're very much like you feel guilty wasting even like a word right it's, it's a great thing but yes also, there's also a, th a time where you're like shit man you could take a deep breath like you earned it you yeah, know? yeah, yeah you could take a deep breath yeah. and and look we talk about placement for an hour and yeah you if i do a story i usually do a st like one at least one or two long stories right. per hour and i'll I put them at the end. Right. It's kind of like, all right, this is where it goes. Yeah. Where I feel like I can prove. And you're like, I remember a tell once in a late night set, says this first joke and it kills. And he goes, I've proven I'm funny. <laughs> and it's like, that's kind of what it is. You're like, yeah. okay, I've proven I can do Thank well you. here. Let, right. Give me a minute to, to let this 
longer one build up to it. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. right. You know? Yeah. Yeah, he earned it. Well, I realized on the road when I first started headlining that it's like you, I just had such a New York mentality where, where where it's like you just go up and just just uh, machine gun them with jokes. And it's like I realized like, oh, they're there to see you. Yeah. Like even if they don't know you, they're there to see you. So it's like kind of relax into the rapport with them. And you're you are you're armed with all of the jokes already. You right, have them. they're right. not going anywhere. You could use them at any time you want. But instead of just going up there like a city set and just being like boom, 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 just like relax into them. Get to like get the rapport going. You don't have to rush into it. And then drop the jokes in wherever you see fit because you yeah. have them. But don't I mean, I, I'm speaking personally. I have that fear they'll get bored. Because stand-up right. is in, kind of boring. It's right. a guy on stage talking yeah. or a girl on stage talking. It's not a ton of – some guys will hump on a stool or doing backflips. But for us, it's just this. Yeah. So I, I think you got to hammer them. But maybe I'm wrong. No, that it, that's – I just think that, like the mentality of the road is like also it's 15 minutes in a city. Uh, so true, it's like you got to get up there and just like you have to prove it and then you have to like oh hit them with ju- and like when you have an hour it's like all right it's an yeah, hour yeah. so it's just like let's take our time. Right. You know what I mean? They're, an no hour is so much easier. Like I always feel bad like whoever's opening doing like 20. Everyone's like that's the kill spot. I'm like yeah I guess but it's like 20 minutes is harder. It's harder to do 20 minutes in an hour. Mm, right. I, I don't th- know. If, if the crowd's, if it's your crowd, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, I yeah, see. If it's a good crowd, right, 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 right. Absolutely, yeah. yeah I want to fucking do. Now, does I want to feature. Breathe. Usually, come off and tell you that they're a headliner. They just weren't. <laughs> <laughs> but also, you got to think Columbus, Ohio, or Denver, Colorado. They're not as fast paced as New York, anyway. Right. So. To, if you're kind of slowing down, they don't even notice it. Right, right. Well, that's right. the New York mentality everywhere. You go into a fucking diner. Yeah. Like, oh, sit da- go, sit down. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. You go to yeah. a diner in the South, they're like, they're like, we'll get to it. We'll, oh, yeah. we'll you ever go to a salad it. place here? I mean, you got to know. You go down the line like, uh, uh, olives, yeah, yeah. mushroom. <laughs> if, if you stumble, they're like, come on, you faggot. And you're like, wait, what? <laughs> what are we doing here? Yeah. This is legitimately yeah. good. It's mm. so good. Not bad, right? Yeah. Dude. Oh, yeah. But yeah, they... Yeah. Uh, Everything is faster, but they make it up for you in the South and other places with um, kindness. You know what I mean? So it, everything takes longer, but in the middle of it <laughs> taking longer, <laughs> so they're true. actually nice to you. They go, how's your day? Right. <laughs> and they, they really want their, how is your day? It's like, all right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it's good. It's like the weather we're getting here. And they're like, they sink into a conversation. Totally. Whereas in here, it's just like, they nobody, people look through you. Yes. Yeah. You know, that's the biggest thing, hardest thing that people have adjusted to in New York. It's like sitting on the subway, it's just like looking through people. Yeah. Oh yeah. Just because there's so much stimulus coming in and you have to like, yes, wall some of it off. I find the you same. You grew up here, so it's like, yeah. yeah. But like, you know, when you're on the road and they're like, can you do our podcast at the club at four? Then you got to show at seven, a show at nine thirty. Then you got to sell merch after the first show. You got to meet the host. You got to meet the feature. It's a lot of stimulus. Yeah. And you're like, I should be saving some of this for the show. What am I doing right, here? Right, right. Well, that's what I always remember with these clubs where they have you do like morning radio and like you do the show Thursday night and then they're like, all right, morning radio is at us. Uh, Pick up is at 6 a.m. <laughs> yes. Like, I flew in yesterday and I'm going to bed at three. Yes. Just wired from the Thursday night show. And maybe a few pops. Yeah. And then you're just like, you're on radio like, Ugh. I yeah. remember I was on muscle relaxers on one of them and I, I had to have like a manager pull it down because I was just like <laughs> making no sense. And then, Oh, wow. And we got to get that on the Patreon. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I'm like, this is what like, they made me be here and I'm just on there. And they're like, I'm like, blah, 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 blah. and they're just like, okay. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I'm like two shows tonight, and they're like, no one's coming. To this show. Yeah. Based on this sales pitch, where he's slurring, this guy's the next Hedberg. <laughs> like worried about you. It sucks to be called the next the next Hedberg, not for your comedy. Yeah, <laughs> exactly, exactly. Uh, yeah, you know uh, those morning radio, th- and then of course you do two shows that night, and yeah. you're, you're just exhausted. Yeah, you're just. T- I mean, it's like. I'm not complaining. It's a great fucking gig, but it's it's one of the things where you're like, yeah, you need to conserve energy. Oh, yeah. It's- I always check the morning radio with uh, 6 a.m. as t- I judge whether to have coffee or not. Mm. And the way I judge it is like, okay, it's 6 a.m. It's like, how long am I on for? Yeah. And if they go, you're on for the whole morning you're on for an hour because i want to be on as long as possible because if we're gonna if i'm gonna get up that early of course let's try to sell some tickets right you know what i mean so keep me on as long as possible i hang through the break i'll do trap whatever you guys yeah but if i'm getting up if i have to get up for five minutes i'm not drinking coffee Ah. i want to go back to sleep yeah Yeah. good point 
Now, can you guys sleep? I can't nap. No, I don't. I don't nap. I can really. I can, yeah, Never. I can sleep if I don't drink the coffee and I'm doing five minutes. I just and they're five. Oh, we got Mike Vecchione here. And you have a It's like, all right, man. Thanks for stopping by. Then I leave and I'll go back to sleep. Yeah. I had. I'm only an asshole when I get two hours of sleep, and that's like there's that clip of me that where I'm just fucking with the morning people, and it's because I got two hours of sleep. I was. We flew from uh, L.A. to Sacramento, uh, like a couple weeks ago, and it was just a long day. It was like you know. You do the shows in L.A., then you wake up the next morning, and you got to take the, the early flight to Sacramento because you can't chance it, right? Mm. So we land. We get at the gig. We don't get a hotel because we're like, let's just chill at the venue all day. And it's like a beautiful theater, the Crest Theater, but it's not a good theater for, like, hanging. Right. right. Downstairs, it's it's like – and I used to live in an apartment like this where, like, all the doors don't go up to the ceiling. Oh, the worst. <laughs> and, uh, and that's what all the green rooms were. So I literally – I hear my video guy, James, just, like, belching. <laughs> I hear Vitor on, like, FaceTiming with his kids. <laughs> Every door slamming, all the people are like yeah. slamming the door, and I'm like trying to sleep and I can't sleep. And at one point, I just get up and I go, "Shut the fuck up, motherfuckers!" <laughs> and everyone's like, "What the fuck?" And I'm just like, "Sorry." And I just like go back into bed. But everyone shut up. I was able to sleep. Oh, all right. Only time I've taken a nap in like years. Wow. Uh, I don't nap. Yeah, no, I'm not two hours sleep. You don't nap. I, I can, just I can't, I can't do, do it, do it in the dude. Night. I I did it because I was so fucking tired and I was sick. So I yeah, was like, yeah. but uh, no, if I'm like on a flight, I'll like doze off sometimes yeah. but i don't know i don't but it takes so long to nap like a 10 minute nap or a 20 minute nap takes me like three hours because i have to like shut down yeah, i have yeah. to turn the lights down right. i have to lay there right. look at your phone a little bit jerk right. up you know you get it <laughs> <laughs> but the cons- the conserving but people, energy is people big. don't understand that um that early morning flight because you don't want to chance it what you just what you said and that's really the truth it's like i could leave at two and get there at four and then the show is seven but the thing if the flight gets delayed at all I'm, I could miss the show. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm screwed. So it's like, it's either that 2 o'clock or a 6 a.m. It's like, I got to take the 6 a.m. to be safe. Uh, oh, no. I take and the I got to get up at 4. You know? Take it's the like, 2. I did it for the Knicks game. I came back on a 6 a.m. flight to go to the Knicks game on Sunday. And uh, I was like running on fumes. I was like, fuck it. I'm getting drunk. I yeah. Just started, yeah. Just started pounding. That's great. But on the, uh, see, the, uh, the other end of that yeah. is a cell- it's the Knicks game. Yeah. So you, you got that to look forward to. I was so pumped. Yeah. We lost, but I was so pumped. Ah. Yeah. But the drink, it helps. It does wake you up. It's temporary, <laughs> but it helps when yeah, you're on getting, fumes. Yeah. Nice. And we saw, I was with Stav, and we saw we saw A-Rod going into the building. And Adam Glenn, you know, he, he yeah. works for oh, TMZ yeah. now. Oh, he's God. like, you guys should annoy A-Rod. And I was like, that's a great idea. <laughs> <laughs> so we just, we, Stav and I just run up to A-Rod, and we're like, yo, A-Rod, can we take a picture with you? And he's like, sure. And his handlers are like, fuck it. They're like trying to push us away. <laughs> we, we got one pick off. Uh, <laughs> nice. Great. It's just a great pick of Stav lurking behind <laughs> A-Rod. Yeah. <laughs> trying to sniff J-Lo <laughs> <laughs> but also the thing about the five minute radio this is what kills me and this is where I sound like Mark Cuntman Norman but it's not just five minutes of radio it's getting picked up by the club manager who wants to chit chat at 6.20 in the morning right. and he's like so how's uh, New York <laughs> oh it's good oh yeah alright and then you get to the radio and then you gotta chit chat with the makeup lady you gotta chit chat with the dog lady in the in the green room with you who's, who's doing like doing makeup for radio well I'm sorry uh, morning TV <laughs> TV yeah, yeah. and then yeah. there's the dog lady and then there's the chef guy who's gonna make the, the, uh, the skewers <laughs> today and all that and yeah. it's like it's just so much extra yeah. shit it's not just it's like the guest spot can I do five minutes yeah. on your show <laughs> alright yeah it's just five minutes but then you gotta sit in the green room with him you gotta yeah. hang out with the guy he feels weird so he's doubling down on the convo because he doesn't want any silence <laughs> and and then he uh, then the guy comes in for the the sound check guy comes in he goes is he doing a guest set on the second show and now it's awkward so you gotta be like okay oh, <laughs> the whole thing's brutal the, the morning tv thing is the best when you're in the green room with like whatever like you know lady like she's like i'm coming on after you to show a cooking recipe and you're like oh that's nice yes and then, and then you come in afterwards and you just see the look of horror on her face <laughs> she doesn't look at you the same she's like you're not a good person yeah <laughs> but you guys are the best because you make the most of that. You realize what the opportunity is. Oh, you got to do it. And you make the most of the morning radio. And if they don't have you back, like you guys. Don't They're know. never pleased with us. No, never. Yeah. But that's why it's good. That's why it's good. Don't have me on if you don't want me to be me. Yeah. You know? Well, who am I? Barbara Walters? <laughs> no, I'm going in. No, you're alive. <laughs> yeah. But do you ever do that thing where it's like you go to another town and you're like, I wonder what it, in an alternate universe what my life would be like if I just had a regular job and I lived here and how that would be. Suicide. <laughs> now, <laughs> now, here's a question. <laughs> what would you do if you had to have a gig outside yeah. of comedy? 
Ideally, I'm not saying you're qualified for every gig, but if you could pick a gig. Something sports related. Sports announcer, writer. Yeah, writer, announcer, like maybe maybe even like a sports, I don't know, something sports. Okay. How about you? I would go UPS guy. No office, you're outside, you got a car with no door, you got shorts on, you might fuck a couple of housewives with the packages. (laughs) <laughs> that would be mine. Most of these packages are left yeah. outside these days, though, I feel True. like. True. Might fuck a doorman. Ah, there we go. Yeah. And I get on some ring doorbells. Maybe I'll get <laughs> go viral. I'll do like a dance or something. <laughs> That's an idea, actually, uh, like to go to Martin Scorsese's house and hopefully as a ring. <laughs> just audition <laughs> oh, into that's it. That's great, just yeah. Marty! Into it. Yeah. yeah. That's good. Just keep going. Give me the money, you cocksucker. <laughs> it's like that's got to fit somewhere into a Scorsese movie. <laughs> Marty just, he opens the door. He's like, you got the gig. Yeah. <laughs> you got the gig. Yeah. Yeah. Hugs you. <laughs> so that's an idea. These ring lights, it's a good way to audition. That's not bad. I would be. A, I would actually be a TikTok dancer. No. Yeah. yeah, I'd be a big dancer. All right. No, I can't dance. My thing is, um, <laughs> you know, I would own a small, if I had like a town in the middle of the country or something, I would own a small business you'd have to because that's kind of what we're doing now mm, it's like small true. business you would throw everything behind that that yep. would be your life that's what we're doing with this is like yeah we're throwing everything into it so uh but i like the um my fantasy is a food truck is a food truck guy because i feel like once you get the permits you know i know there's some red tape with the permits but you could just go anywhere it's like where where people construction site at lunch and then uh people getting out of work like Boom! You set up a set up there and, and sell. And then if you just if you need extra money, it's like wherever the clubs let out at two in the morning. So oh $4. yeah, right. Sell just a limited item, but j- jack the prices. And you can always. It's just like a moving money machine. Yeah, you just make money. Good point. Yeah, yeah. Horrible. You get the drunks, but you gotta get, get the permits. Drunks. That's a providence, I think. That uh, Federal Hill. It's like, it's like people would come out from drunk and, and it's just like there's just food trucks lined up and it's just they, yeah, they have really them. good food trucks man. really good providence is yeah. kind of cool uh, next to the food. cellar there's a, that food truck when you come off the subway from west forth it's like spaghetti oh yeah it's that's right food truck i'm too scared to eat there is it yeah, any is good? It good i don't know i gotta try maybe you got maybe you guys want to put me as a um reporter <laughs> uh, <laughs> go and try it and tape a short segment and then send it back to you guys there's a, a Mexican food truck on uh, right outside of uh, Christopher Street. The one, so good. Yeah. Shout out to them. I forget. I forget what they're oh, called. Oh yeah, they are really good. Very good. Ten dollar burrito, taco. Those tacos are mad good. Very good. They always have a line. Yeah, it's wow. like a great late night. Great spot. Surprisingly good too, because you like yeah. Mexican food. I feel like New York is like we're just not. We have so many good cuisines, but we we just. We have good Mexican spots, but that's like not our thing, New York. Right, right. Like you know, Texas, California. Yeah, for yeah, for Houston. Houston, Houston, good Mexican. I food. love Mexican San Antonio food. is amazing. Yeah, for oh, Mexican yeah. food. Right. San Diego. Yeah, L.A. is. Great I Mexican find New York food. is great for food because I came from Philly. I started comedy in Philly, and New York has great food, but it's, you're going to pay for it. Yeah, like, oh, as yeah. soon as they realize they have great food, everybody jacks the prices up, and it's like a five star Michelin, whatever. But in Philly, in South Philly, where the Italians are, it's like. There's corner places that are delicious mm. and cheap just because they take pride in their food. Interesting. New yeah. Orleans is similar. Like, you can't get Creole here. I've tried it. It's all That's horrible. another one that, for some reason, also and barbecue. Barbecue, now, too. Kind of barbecue. There's a couple, but, like, yeah. yeah, of course there's, like, a few. I know people are going to, like, get the comments. Dallas place, barbecue. But, yeah. Dinosaur but, barbecue. Yeah, like, oh, dude, like, Kansas City barbecue or, like, Ooh. Oklahoma or Texas. Yeah, like, so good. Shit. Texas. St. Louis, St. Louis, Louis barbecue. Yeah. Nashville. But... Yeah. You can't get Creole, but in New Orleans, you can go to some hole in the wall place, get a po' boy, like a shrimp po' boy, and it's, yeah. it's the best thing you've ever eaten. But it's the culture, yeah, yeah. But I, I gotta go to Southfield. I've never been to Southfield. That's where Rocky runs through. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, I gotta I go there. Is it still Italian? I think so. Yeah. Wow. Because I think a lot of Italians moved to South Jersey because they wanted ha- a house and space mm. and all that. But I think that property taxes went up, and all the South Jersey, Washington Township Italians moved back to Southfield. Mm. So I think it's like a, a thing. It's all like, right. Yeah. So the Philly. food is the food is unreal. Ba-ba-ba. We used to go to this place called I dated a girl down there and I worked down there and uh, we used to go to this place called Evelyn and Shanks. I don't know if it's still there. I doubt it. But it was just a hole in the wall. It was like three tables and like three Italian old Italian women cooking. Oh, I love and it. Like a, have a fried meatball platter, Ooh, broccoli rob. 
Probably Rob, Rob is solid, Rob, dude. Rob you solid just girl. want a fat lady with a dirty apron. That's all you want <laughs> out of a restaurant. You want to see like fat tits with a little sweat. <laughs> yes. Sure. Yeah, yeah, maybe a hairnet. Yeah. She calls you hun. Or <laughs> well, she tells you to like, calm down. Yeah, you want one of those. it's coming. Down. Like a, I like a sassy. Up. Man, there was this place in AC called Tony's Baltimore Grill. And it's just oh, like, yes. It's just I love it. Those old Italian women. Love Tony. That place Bull. is so That reminds solid. me of the South Philly place. I love that okay. spot. There's something about it. And also like, I remember one week I was there and I just got loaded there like every night. You'd order like a, a Jack and Coke. It would come in a pint glass yeah. and like five bucks. Yeah. <laughs> like this is a fucking problem right here. But right. Uh, but the food is like great. Food was great. Yeah. And they were open all night. I mean, pre-COVID, but they were open all 24 night. 24 hours, the yeah. Wow. And all the people, all the wait staff and stuff from the casinos would get off work and go there. Woo! You get some real dregs of society yeah, there. Yeah. I, I brought one of them. Uh, <laughs> he was, my friend Adam is like really a fucking problem. He's like a degenerate gambler. I literally, he's like that dude where you know you go to a casino and he's and you're playing a gig and he's just there. Yeah. He'd be like, oh, I saw you were doing a gig here, so I figured, I'm like, oh boy. That's right. awesome. Cool, yeah. Oh, yeah. Old Adam. Hey, yeah. so you worked, did you ever work the Trop Stop down there? Uh-uh. Okay, so no, you did. Yeah, I got Trop fucking, stop. I got uh, scammed there. Right. They didn't pay me. Whoa. Right. When it was going out, right? Yeah. Okay, so <laughs> but you remember you have to, you'd have to stay in that Nucky Thompson building that, yes. um, where Boardwalk Empire yeah, I remember, the real building. I remember walking into that building shit face and just seeing a giant cockroach and stomping it and just collapsing <laughs> onto the bed. <laughs> Wow. That's like my memory of that weekend. That's like, like a noir movie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like a half bottle of whiskey. Uh, ah, I just stopped the cockroach. One. I just walked over the bed yeah. and just fell flat my face. It's really great. But the thing is, is it would be uh, the trap was across the street. And what you would have to do is, and you don't know any of this beforehand when you do it for the first time, so it's complicated. But you drive your car around, you take your suitcase up, or, or you drive the car around and just... You have to let it sit there and then go across the street to get the keys oh. and then come back and then put your uh, luggage up and then drive your car to the garage yeah. and put it in. Oh, so there's a like nightmare. a bunch of steps. But when it, my point is whenever you would uh, drive up, the security guard for that place would come out and be like, you can't park every <laughs> single time. Every single time it was a new guy just waving his hands going, you can't park here. Yeah. You can't leave your car here. And it's like, I know, dude. I have to go over, get the keys, and come back. But it's like after a while, I just leaned into it and just be, would be like – because people like – Sometimes with these jobs, they just they have information, so it's like you gotta yes. let them you gotta let them get it out. Yes. So he goes, you can't park here. I go, are you, I can't? <laughs> and he goes, no, you cannot park here. It's like, oh, thank you, <laughs> thank you for letting me know. I'm gonna can I just leave here for a couple seconds and then go get the key? He goes, all right. That's good. <laughs> you know what I mean? But it's like it's like they feel empowered. Right. You know what you I mean? Flip it on them. Yeah. I remember doing that gig because you work with two other comics, right? It was yeah. like a three headliner show, yeah. and I remember one of the guys I was working with was just like. He was just betting on. First off, we got scammed on money, so we didn't get paid for the week. But also, the guy I was working with was like a crazy sports gambler, mm. so he was just bet on like meaningless baseball games. You can't bet on baseball. There's 162 games in right. a season. They're like right. they're meaningless. The games. Yeah. So every time he'd look down, he'd be like on his phone. He'd be like. Can't catch a fucking break. <laughs> that was a whole week. Like, can't get, and then by the end of the week, I was like, man, he really can't catch a break. I mean, yeah. We got fucked. But, uh, <laughs> but it was always it was always how they would not pay you as as it was like you'll get it in two weeks. Right. It was always that. Yeah. You know? Which just means never. It meant never at the end, I think, when he was going out of business. I had such a I fucking weak agent at the time he was such a fucking weasel i remember telling him and he's like well these things happen i was like that's not what you say wow. that's not what you say when no. yeah, i was like well you got to do yeah. something and he's just like no i'm like well you got like you can't commission me for a while. i was like that's not how it works i'm like wow these guys are a piece this guy's a piece of shit you fired him of course yeah, yeah. these I mean, things happen <laughs> <laughs> how do you like it <laughs> no it was really uh that was like a classic you know it's a bad gig at a casino when they won't put you up in the casino yeah. Oh, good yeah. point. Not even, they're not even giving you a hotel yeah. room? Yeah. What kind of deal do they have? Like, how much are they shaving off the top that they can't comp you a fucking room? Right. Yeah. You know? Because yeah. you work a good casino. Like, they take care of you. Yes. Oh, yeah. That, the, yeah. Casinos are, that's the hospitality yeah. business. Yeah. Totally. You go to Vegas, like, you won't get better service right. than Vegas. Do you ever take that deal where they're like, we'll pay you in chips? Don't take no, it. No, what? 
I heard they do that, right, Mark? Yeah. They do it, but they're they talking do about, this. They're talking about Lay's. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm in joke mode. <laughs> uh, Hand you a bag story. of Fritos, you yeah. can't catch a fucking break. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> but you know, we were talking about the South Philly plays, the Creole play. You know what New York has that I worry is going away is the diners. You guys got these hole in the wall uh, yeah. shit box diners, the greasy spoon. They're so good. I but love a greasy spoon. They're dropping like flies. Yeah. I feel like they're not not around as uh yeah. they're not as plentiful. The flies are in the omelet. <laughs> but uh, no, I love a I love a greasy spoon. I love a good like something about like an omelet on yeah. the road too or like two, two eggs and bacon or mm. like or like, you know, just fucking crispy ass hash brown. Yeah, a cup of coffee, Some sit there all toast. day, yeah, yeah, yeah. read yeah. the paper. We go to La Bobonniere on uh on Hudson. And it's it's got to be a health violation in there, but oh, it's yeah. so good. Yeah. I, best feeling ever is when you when you're like a regular at a diner and the guy will just come out like I know what you would like. Yes, yeah, yes, yeah. we have that guy, yeah, Paco. Yeah. I know what you like, Marco. Yeah. Marco. <laughs> <laughs> Feels good to be seen. Yeah. Yes, yeah, it yeah. does. But totally. I like that breakfast all day, and then yes. I like I'm open late all day, yes. which doesn't happen anymore. I feel like COVID gave people an excuse to be like, yeah. no, nah, no, nah, we're closing it. 10. Right. And any Starbucks and any hotel, it's like never. Never. Like open. We're open from 9, 10 to 9. Until like 15. 2 p.m. How about every fucking road <laughs> coffee shop? They're like, we close at 2. And you're like, people like coffee after 2. <laughs> yes. <laughs> people uh, work I at know. night. Why wouldn't you put one person there just to make the money? Say we will about Hampton Inn. They got coffee around the clock in the that. lobby. You can yeah. take as much as you want. Yeah. You take 10 cups if you yeah. want. When it's I'm feeling best. bad, I use a little bit of that hazelnut creamer. Ooh. <laughs> Real fucking piggy. You're living. Oh, French vanilla. Oh, that's Those... what killed Kirstie Alley. <laughs> <laughs> and the cheese. Cheesecake. 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 You ever, you ever, just, cheesecake. You ever had like a 7-Eleven, you just fucking dumped that almond joy creamer in there? Oh. It's just straight sugar. It's all sugar. It's like oil and sugar. <laughs> yeah, I'm just like, oh, I'm going to coffee. I want to be an yeah. adult. And then you're like, let's put some cake batter creamer in there. <laughs> yeah. oh, See, that's pig. what the, di- the diners are leaving and the 7-Elevens are taking over. Ah. 7-Elevens are gross. Uh, They're bad. terrible. I mean, it's, yeah. it's tough, too, to just like, those, I feel like they didn't come in for the diners. They came in for like those corner stores. Yeah, yeah. Those right. Classic, like, also, like, how many fucking vape shops? Yeah. I know. I hate the vape. It's yeah. like literally, like, how long? I don't feel like people. Is vaping going to be forever? Is that yeah. a thing? I guess it will be. It's I just, think it's cheap uh, overhead and they make money, but yeah, I hate them. They're everywhere and they got the neon lights flashing. Yeah. It's a new it's bong brutal. store, I guess. Right. It used to be the pipes and the And then also, then um, there's a bunch of uh, if the screen is broken on your phone stores. <laughs> yes, yes. Broken screen store? I don't even know. They're this all over the place. This is a great now. podcast. Three, uh, three aging white guys don't like change. <laughs> 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 and you know what else I don't like that's changing? <laughs> you know that's what really I, grinds my gears? Yeah. <laughs> they should have finished that wall. <laughs> 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 That's really what this is turning into. All right, we got to wrap this up before this turns into a sixty minutes. Or whatever. <laughs> Mickey Rooney, you got any? You got some dates to plug? Yeah, with? I have two big ones, which is um, Rosemont, Illinois. Yeah, classic. Good so room. Please come out to that one. Um, I love that. Club. And uh, Levity Live in Nyack. Nice. Uh, so those two dates, Palisades um, Mall, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So um, so Nyack and Chicago. Um, the May 26th and 27th for Chicago, June 8th through 10th at uh, Levity Live. Nice. And uh, please watch the special on YouTube, Mike Vecchio and the Attractives. And follow me on social media at Comic Mike V. I'm putting out content constantly. One, one of the, the best, best comics. Yeah, Great yeah, joke, truly, writer. And, and one of the best dudes as well. I really I appreciate that. you guys having me on. You. Like I know I cold uh, texted you, Sam, to, uh, and I appreciate you really having me on too hang out number one and to promote also one of, one of the best comics since since I, as long as I can remember prolific and uh, and a fucking great dude so it's nice nice always nice when it's both a lot of people we have on here and they're funny but they're pieces of shit yeah you got that right <laughs> you successful know, I don't, I don't care for him yeah <laughs> Successful. <laughs> we, uh, you were the first guy I ever saw at the cellar. By the way, I went to the cellar when I first moved here and it was Geraldo oh my god it was Atel it was oh. you and Norton that was Damn. the show, wow. and it was a show. banger. And then somebody I can't remember, somebody I think he's not doing anymore. But you killed, and nice. I brought a friend. He was like that guy who looked like a cop, never stopped telling jokes. That's awesome. Because everyone else kind of Geraldo was hammered, right? Right. You know, Norton fucked with a guy in the crowd, but you yeah. just boom, boom, boom. It was great. That's yeah. an insane lineup. Yeah, that's really fucking cool. Good times. Um, when does this come out? 
Okay. All yeah. right. You see Before what you got? do your dates, yeah. Sam, this comes out May 21st. What's your prediction on the playoffs? Ooh. Let's see if it comes true. Oh, by the way, uh, my prediction on the pl- Dude, you know I'm, I'm fucking. I know, but I want to hear how you think it's going to play out. My prediction is I'm, I'm all in on the Knicks, baby. Always. Man, that's not a good prediction. I oh. bet with my heart and I live by the fucking sword, brother. <laughs> I don't think that makes sense. But you know this what is, I'm saying, brother. This is going to be you on May 20th. Can't catch a break. <laughs> 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 All right, so May, uh, let's see, May, yeah, oh, June 1st in Hampton Beach. Oh, New Hampshire, yeah, Portland, Maine, uh, Mashantucket, Connecticut. Don't know what that is. It's a casino, I guess. Oh, fuck. Oh. There we go. Richmond, Virginia, Pearly's, baby. Hey, I'm great I'm Pearly's, diner. my favorite Jewish spot. Great diner. Rich, yeah, uh, Greensboro, Asheville, Charlotte, uh <laughs> Knoxville, Memphis, Tennessee on June 9th, yeah, June 10th in Birmingham, June mm-hmm. 11th in Chattanooga, yeah. 9th, 10th, 11th, three different cities. That's Thirteen. impressive. You get a bus, Sam? Three nights. We're on the three bus cities. for that awesome. one. Yeah, June got... 13th in Nashville. The Ryman is great. June 22. Oh, you're doing the Ryman? Denver. Yeah. Wow. That's, wow. that's a beauty. One yeah. of the great venues in America. I've a never... late show added at the Paramount Theater yeah, that's on good. the 22nd of great, June. Also a great venue. Yeah. Santa Fe, San Antonio, Houston. You get the deal. Tickets on samurail.com slash shows. And uh, and Bodega Cat. And I do believe, tell me if I'm wrong here, Mark, your comedy special is out? No. Not yet? Not yet. Not okay, yet. Right. I think uh, July. Okay. We got some time. Wow. So. And this is a you, special I directed for Stavros. It's about to hit a million views. Hell two yeah. Weeks. Wow. Stavros is My on brother. fire. Stavros. It's on My YouTube brother. four nights in New York City. Nice. One, one of the best. One of our favorites. So funny. And, uh, and, and, my, and my Knicks brother, now that Giannis got knocked out, once the Bucks lose, Stav is all in on the Knicks. So. <laughs> there you go. Nice. I'll, be, uh, I'll be in uh, this weekend when this comes out. I think I'll be in Austin doing that mothership. Nice. I'm going to check that out. And then I'm going straight to Australia from there. Oh, my God. I'll see in Sydney, Adelaide, Perth, Melbourne, uh, New Zealand. Brisbane. Austin to Sydney. That's not a direct. No, it's going to be ugly. I'm coming Oof. back to New York, then flying out. Oh, wow. But it's going to be a nightmare of a flight, but I'm staying there for a while, and uh, we're adding shows like crazy, so jump on board, get on it, oi, oi, oi. And then announcing, by the time this comes out, I'll have some uh, my theater tour announced, and uh, we'll go from there. Doing all the big cities. See you in hell. <laughs> thank you, Mike. BodegaCatWhiskey.com. Yes. Yeah. Bodega Cat. We're glasses. making moves. Uh, by the way, I was just in Texas. I'm holding one up at the I fucking liquor store. Specs. How crazy is that? Amazing. It's in Hold, the store. Buy, bought a couple bottles because I want them to know shit's going down. Yeah. <laughs> I want them to know products moving. There you go. But uh, yeah. Beer Jew, you got anything? Beer Jew is in New York for a while. Come see me at Good Room, Brooklyn, and Greenpoint. Hell yeah. And, uh, I'll be here for a while until I go to Australia as well. Ooh. Nice. Okay. Well, there you go. All right, Sally. Thank you, Peters. Queef it up. We love you, Peters. We love you all at home. Thank you for uh, for listening and, uh, and tell a friend. There you go. Keep drinking. Sunday's a day for my next bender. A bit of fever wreck. You know the beer juice close. I've had a little too much bourbon. And Norman's talking shit about the fucking post. And I get down in the same way. Up on the roof like a cop's coming. And naked Samuel is feeling dangerous. I'm out to lunch here in New Orleans. This woman doesn't look like I remember her. And I.